Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today Godot 4 gets an auto LOD system. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to take a look at how it works and some of the caveats and some of the cool features that, that are extremely useful for us. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create ourselves a 3D scene. One of the coolest things about this feature is it's all automatic. So as soon as you import your model, it'll just handle it for you. So I don't need to show you guys how to do any setup or anything crazy like that. It just does it. So to kind of demonstrate that, let me go ahead and open up Blender here and let me control A and add in a monkey head here. Now that I have this, let's go ahead and add a modifier and let's go ahead and add in a subdivision surface and let's make it a level of two. And now let's go to file export and let's go ahead and export it as a GLTF format. And I want to make sure I have it in my proper folder location, which in this case is my documents LOD. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I include my selected objects and that I apply my modifiers because I want the subdivision surface to be applied. So if I go ahead and I click export GLTF, it'll export it out nice and quick. And then let me switch over to my LOD and you can see that we have it right here. So now if I drag this into Godot, first of all, you'll notice that there's a small bug here with Godot uh, 4 as of right now. When you import it in, it becomes in this little tiny box and that's it. And you get this little error here, could not load resource, no cache. Uh, RES Suzanne. So if any devs are actually watching this, um, I don't know what's going on here, but it's blowing up on me. But if I want to see it, I can just go ahead and open up the scene and just do a new inherited scene and focus on my Suzanne. Now, if I come down here and I go to my load, my LOD bias, and I drag this down, you'll notice that nothing has changed. Why is that? Well, the reason why is because the Godot devs were smart enough to only allow edges that have the same sharpness value to be combined. So if something isn't smooth surfaced or hard edge, if they don't butt up directly and smooth together, then the Godot engine doesn't decimate it down. So what I mean by that is if you go back to Blender and you go up to object and you go ahead and smooth shade this, right? So now everything's smooth. And then you go to file, export, GLTF, and you go ahead and re-export your Suzanne. And then you go to your LOD. You'll see that it is um, importing it again, and it's taking much longer. And the reason why is because it is generating your LODs here. You can see right here. So now if we go ahead and close this, don't save. Please don't crash Godot. I think Godot might be crashing on me. There we go. All right. So... Let's go ahead and go back into the scene, new inherited, and let's go focus on this Suzanne here. You can see if I come back to my geometry and I change my LOD bias and I start pulling it back down and I zoom out, you'll see that it snapped. See that? Now, one of the things you'll notice is there is a bug, it seems, with maybe like the shadow mapping or something like that, where the shadows get really messed up as you go through your LODs. But that's something that they're probably figuring out, I'm sure. I'll put in a bug report for it. But if I pull this all the way down to one and I change my perspective to display wireframe, you can see how it's decimated down the mesh here. So if I zoom in, you'll see it starts popping in and out the mesh. So you can see the nice detailed mesh that I have. And then as I zoom out, you'll see it decimates it down. And it's, it's really fast because of the LOD bias I have. So let me pull that up a tiny bit. Up too much. So let's pull this back down. 
There we go. So you can see it just pops like that as it transitions. You can see it actually lays the new one and the old one on top of each other. And then it gets rid of it. You can see that right there. See, so you have two of them at the same time and then it gets rid of it. And that is to help with uh, making it look good, if that makes sense. It actually allows the, um, the transition to be smoother, if that makes sense. And you can see as we zoom out, the polygon count really starts to reduce here. And I'm pretty sure I can go to my information here. But you can see with the primitive count, it's going down as we move back. So you can see 17, 15. And then as we move forward, you can see 19, 23, 27. So it really helps with reducing the amount of CPU and GPU time and really helping with frame rates. So let's go ahead and do a small experiment. Let's see what happens if we have some sharpened edges on our object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use this little model here, which I got from Sketchfab here from the Pony Cartoon 3D model by Slava Z. So thank you so much. Check out his work. It's a really nice little model here that I am gonna be using for our little experiment here. Uh, if we go ahead and we look at Blender here, here is the model, which it's beautiful, by the way, and it looks great. So if we come in here and we tab into edit mode and select our edges around this little light here. So let's do that. So if I just hold control and I click, you'll see that it's going to wrap around this real quick. And then I'm going to go up to edge and mark sharp. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a good contrast between this side and this side. And what happens when something's marked sharp, how is it going to handle the decimation versus when something's not marked sharp? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and hit file, export, GL TIFF 2.0, and I'm just going to call it untitled. That's fine. It's going to have no selected objects, and we're going to apply our modifiers if we have any. I don't believe we have any, but we might as well. And then we're going to go ahead and open up Godot and let that think for a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and drag this in. And Godot is going to lag. All right, let me go focus in on it. And you'll see that it didn't even import it properly. I don't know why. There's some kind of bug here with Godot where it says can't load text or resource. Uh, untitled GL, uh, GLB array mesh NUNXD. And you can see I've been running into this issue for a while. That's okay. So now if we go ahead and click on this and do new inherited and go into that scene real quick, we can actually see our mesh here. Awesome. And one of the coolest things about Godot that I've noticed is if you take a look at this and you take a look at this inside of Blender and inside of Godot and it looks almost exactly the same which is awesome for us i mean it's it's beautiful how well this works so now let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what differences we can see so if i click on let's see i believe it's mesh zero yeah mesh zero is the body so if i click on the body and i go to geometry and i do lod bias and i drag that down until it starts popping for me all right so if I zoom in here, you can see at full resolution, there's not a huge difference between these two. See? Other than this one is slightly sharper than the other one. If I zoom out just a tiny bit, you'll notice that there's a slight difference. And actually, let me reduce my zoom out speed. Uh, if I zoom out a tiny bit more, you'll notice that the decimation starts kicking in. And you'll see that there's a little bit of a change here where it looks like this is starting to blend in a tiny bit here. If we look at the wireframe here, you can see, well, you really can't see. So I guess we'll just have to take my word for it. But you can see here, this is starting to waver a little bit. Whereas on this side, it's not. You can see that that smooth edge is staying right there. 
So let's zoom out a tiny bit more. Now you can see we decimated quite a bit more. And you can see that this one's edge is starting to collapse on itself. This one, not so much. It's still a perfect circle. But you still got a lot of collapsing going on there. You can see right here. If we zoom out more, it doesn't look like it's making any difference. So it looks like that's the lowest LOD we have. And it really is an awesome little system. So I guess, what did we learn from this? Well, if we want to preserve details on a specific section, like a hard edge or something, that's what marking sharp is for. And it looks like the automatic LOD system respects that sharpness, which is an awesome feature. So good job, devs. So all in all, what do I think about the LOD system? Well, I think it is an awesome step forward for Godot. I, as with a lot of the changes that they've been making with Godot, it's really changed the game on how Godot is going to be used. So I think it's an awesome addition, and I think it's super useful. There are some features that I wish it had, like the ability to assign manual LODs, because some of the LODs are kind of not great. Uh, some other features that would be kind of cool is being able to have maybe a drop down here that just lets you pick between your LOD so you can see them and flip through them easily. But I mean, ultimately, I think that's stuff that can come later. And I think that this is a great addition for the Godot engine. So anyway, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. Now, this was a viewer suggested video, so I do take your guys' suggestions very seriously. And if you have any suggestions, throw them in the comments below because I'd be more than happy to take a look at them. Now, what do you guys think about uh, this and about all the Godot 4 features. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Let me know in the comments below because I would love to know what your guys' opinion on Godot 4 is. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I will see you all next time. Thanks.